Are you prepared for a market crash? Are you prepared? If so, we have products for you. Let me open up my uh, whatever my jacket and show you all the products I got. So I just received an email last night after the, another down market in the Dow. The Dow is down 500 points and the S&P 500 is down 2.5%. Uh, again, and so what happens is, is that whenever the markets are very, very volatile, and of course, volatile only people concerned volatility is when it goes down. Volatility can also be on the upside, but people are just worried about the volatility on the down. You get these purveyors of principal protected securities, principal protected securities, uh, all the time. In fact, I remember back like it was yesterday was this at the end of probably 2004 and five. Uh, lots of financial manufacturers of products were offering principal protected securities because everyone was so scared uh, from what happened in 2000, 2001, and two, And so they offered all these. And Frank, I don't remember how they performed in 2008. I just don't know. So presumably, if they were going to make their money, that would have been the time to do so. I, I just don't know. But anyway, so I get an email from one of the websites I, uh, I, I subscribe to, uh, the magazines, and the email said, prepared for a market crash and the, you know, the question mark. Uh, they're not saying we're predicting it, mind you, because that's why we have that question mark there, but doesn't that draw your eye? And it did, it drew my eye. And so I said, let me dive into this and see what this product is about. Oh, welcome again to Heritage Wealth Planning, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you like what you see. And of course, thumbs up and comments always help me. All right, so I dove into it. I'm not gonna name the, the provider of this thing, but it's an exchange traded fund that gives you a bunch of different options for principal protection or buffer is what they use, a buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R, where they're not protecting your principal from losses, but they're gonna buff, give you some buffer, that way you don't uh, fall too much relative to the market. And I'll share with you some examples here in just a second. Now, the point about this um, that I'm gonna do here is it kind of, the, the reason I was very interested in this because a guy a subscriber asked me about my opinion on fixed index annuities, and I was diving into them last night, which is a lot of times in the morning and at night is when I do my research for the videos I wanna do, and I was diving into some fixed in index annuities. I've been wanting to do that for a while, and, uh, and, it let, and there a lot of similarities between these principal protected, and I hate to even say principal protected because they're not. Uh, but a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities. And, uh, and one thing that jumped out is that neither of them have a dividends reinvested. None of them do. This ex the returns are excluding dividends. And that's a big deal. And I'm not going to dive that, that too much here in this video, but stay tuned on these series because I'm telling you, man, if you're not you using dividends, you are, you, you know, you're just, you're going half cocked. You're, you're not, you don't have the power of dividends reinvested. And I'll show you that here in, in a few videos, if not next one. A little bit here today is too in this video. Uh, but anyway, so they're doing point to point or price to price, however you wanna look at it. They're saying, we're gonna look at the S&P 500 today. We're gonna compare it for the S&P 500 in a year or two or five or whatever, and that will be return, all right? That's what they're gonna give you. So in the example I'm gonna use here today, and trust me, I spent a lot of time Man, I must have looked at this for two to three hours last night, another hour or two this morning. And I, I Frank, I have a, still even have a hard time figuring out what they're doing. I, I get a, the gist of it enough where I'm comfortable giving you a couple of synopsis here. Uh, I'm not representing this firm. I'm not saying what the firm is because I'm not even sure I'm 100% correct. And I hate to say this. Look, I'm not a rocket science. I'm not freaking Einstein. But if I can't figure it out, uh, you know, I do have a pretty extensive experience in this. I guarantee the vast majority of you all, and that sounds arrogant, but I guarantee the vast majority of you all can't either, which is frightening in of itself. Uh, because these are products that you don't even need to be an accredited investor to buy. To buy anyone can buy it. Which, if old Josh can't figure out, again, that sounds cocky. I'm sorry, but if I can't, how could you? I spent hours on this. I'm still. I have all those tabs right, there, right there, just looking at. It. It's like I, I have a pretty good gauge, but that's. I mean, if I'm wrong and they, these guys want to say they're, I'd love to hear what makes it right. I don't know. All right, so the premise, they have a bunch of different ones, and the premise of this one I'm gonna show you here today is they have a 15% buffer, which means if the market's down uh, 10%, you're down 8.5. So you're gonna have 15% less on the downside. Now they had other buffer products, the one was 9%, so you didn't have any losses until the market was down more than 9%. So 2000 would have been a good example. If the market was down nine, you would have not lost any money. I think it was actually down 9.21, so you would have been down 0.21%. The first 9% of the losses 
where you were exempt from. And this one I'm using, I'm, I, and again, I, I've looked at it and this is the only thing I could come to grips on is that you lost 15% less than whatever the market did. That's the buffer. All right, now there's also a 10% cap. So if the market is up a million, you're only gonna get 10%. The market's up 11, you're gonna get 10%. The market's up eight, you'll get 8%. And that, so that's the, that's the limitations here. We got 10% cap, that's the max you'll get. And we got a 15% buffer. That's the, the, uh, the, the, I guess, the protection against lot to some degree losses. Not everything, but some degree losses. All right. By the way, you see my shirt? This is called the Minute Moose. Look at that. Look at that. You got this Patri Path to Patriot, a step in a moose, hiking a football. Yeah. I only get to ask Maine, my friends, because the Maine moose or meese, Ed Meese, are big, 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 big mooses. I'm not sure what the plural of moose is. And so you get. Uh, my daughter had this at Georgia Tech for, for the last six months. I haven't been, able, or I guess four months, I haven't been aware. She came back for a mom to do laundry, and there it is. I mean, where's my Minute Moose shirt? So if you're ever up in Maine and you want to buy a Minute Moose, lots of places you can do that. Go online. And if you ever want to get a Red Sox, they have a moose with red socks. Pretty cool, huh, for the Red Sox? Pretty cool. The era of internet ingenuity is here and is awesome. All right. So let's go to this. So I'm just using this for an example. And again, I'm not 100% sure this is the actual, absolute accurate reflection of the thing. I'll go, if this is a little bit harsh on them, I'll give you a, more, uh, a second example. Be a little more lenient on them where we absolutely get rid of any downside. Downside, so we're going to say there is no downside. And I'll show you what it looks like there. It's still not great. Now, lastly, these products weren't in existence in 1990 or 2000. I don't even think 2010. The specific products that we're talking about here. Uh, so I'm all I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, because they're not reinvesting dividends, we're going to look at the S&P 500 returns year over year and using the Robert Schiller uh, spreadsheets that he has through Yale because Schiller has the uh, the, the uh, uh, Yale spreadsheets. I'm drawing a blank, but Robert Schiller, the guy who wrote the book Irrational Exuberance off of Al Greenspan. So Schiller is a Yale professor. Everyone knows Schiller. And so he has huge amounts of data on his website. And I'm just using from his database, the S&P 500 returns from 1990 to 2017, from 2000 to 2017, and 2010 to 2017. And what I did, I just put it on a spreadsheet. I said, okay, let's look at it with dividends reinvested and without dividends reinvested. Because again, point to point or price to price simply means dividends are not reinvested, which is a problem. I'm gonna show you here. I mean, you can see it over my shoulder, a huge problem. And then we're gonna say, so we're not reinvesting dividends for this example. And we're gonna compare it to when we do reinvest dividends. And then we're also gonna say we have a 15% buffer. So the market goes down 10, we're only going down eight and a half. But you also have a 10% cap. So the market goes up 20. We're only going up 10, like I just explained. So let's look at this. So from 1990 to the end of 2017, $100,000 invested in the S&P 500 and just let their reinvesting dividends would be worth $1.4 million roughly today. $100,000 invested in a similar-minded account where you only got 10% cap and you had a 15% downside buffer would be worth $220,000 without dividends reinvested. So you have three things going on here. No dividends reinvested. You're maxing your upside at 10 and you're only taking 15%. You're taking 15% less of the losses. And as you can see, there is a pretty significant differential, differentiation, whatever, difference. The lack of reinvesting dividends and giving yourself this upside cap uh, really, really affected you deeply. Now that's going on 30 years now. What if we just did from 2000 on, and remember 2000 was the markets really got tanked, 2001 and two. Uh, here we got 256,000 and just leave putting $100,000 in the S&P 500, letting it be. Here we got 119, all right? So, I mean, again, even with the market chaos, if you were able to hang in there for the last 18 years, you made uh, well over 100,000 more. In fact, here you only made $19,000 total. That's it, that's it, $100,000 investment, you only made 19,000. Uh, over the course of 18 years. Uh, that's not good. Again, am I a professor, uh, economics, PhD, st statistician with my Excel? Log? No, no, no. I'm just using it based on what I ascertain. I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to say what you should do. Uh, this is just my observations. Take it or leave it. I frankly don't care, uh, but I do care that not using dividends <laughs> does not be reflected very well with some of these products and as I'm showing you here today. 
Uh, so from 2010, 100,000 the S&P 500 is worth 283,000 at the end of 2017, and it's worth 176,000 uh, in the buffered product. Now, as you can see, what was happening here is the the cap is really, really uh, a distinguishing event. There, I mean, you got years where the market just kicking butt, taking names, well above that 10 percent. And if you're not in it to capture all that, you're going to leave a lot of money on the table. The 15% buffer doesn't really do much uh, in terms, it does, it protects you a little bit. I mean, in 2000, uh, 2001 and two, it did you know, protect you some degree, but it, not much. I mean, at the end of the day, for any long-term investment um, in long terms over five to seven years, you're leaving significant money on the table. There's just no getting around that. And here's when the markets are up. You left over $100,000 on the table because you've capped yourself, you capped your upside. Now, I did do a second scenario here, which I think I found interesting, and you might too. Oh, all right, let's, see, let's see if I can find my spreadsheet. Um, and so you can see all my spreadsheets there. Um, uh, so I said, what if we had not just a buffer, but no downside? There's no downside. So they buy options or something like, there's no, we're, we're gonna eliminate any downside. Now, I'm not, this is not what they're saying. They're not saying this. I'm just saying, what if, we had a, a scenario where there was no downside at all, uh, just a 10% cap. So we're not reinvesting the dividends, got a 10% cap, and we have no downside. In that case, the, oh, I wrote it down. Um, in that case, let me show you here. In 2000, so again, no, no downside, complete free of any loss, zero down. So we're eliminating downside. However they do it. I don't know. Buying all, I, I mean, literally don't know. But let's see. In 2000, in 1990, again, if we eliminate all loss, it'd be 543-593. However, in 2000, this would have been in the green. We would be at 274 Zero, zero, I think it was one or so, I can't remember, but anyway, we round up, two, two thousand zero zero one. So in this case, this would have been in the red here, two, five, six, nine, 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 two, five, six, nine, nine, nine. And at the end of 2010, this guy was 177.333. So with no downside, and this is not a product that they're reflecting. They're not. They're not saying there's a no downside. I'm just telling you right now. And again, I've looked at the perspective. I've looked at everything. I still can't quite figure it out. But with no downside and a 10% cap, we still smoked them from 1990 to 2017. Uh, we got beat by you know, roughly $20,000 from 2000 to 2017 because of the first three years, market was down, we got crunched, and they did not. That's just a fact. Uh, from the last eight years, we smoked them, again, over $100,000 more because a 10% cap limited, hurt us. No other way around that. And because there was no down years, essentially, for the last, of any significance, the last eight years, the, the down cap provided us no... Uh, it didn't give us any help at all. So that's, a, again, principle protected. It's not what I'm trying to say because that's what it was, and I don't even know if they offer those anymore. These are buffered securities. We're going to give you a buffer, a cushion of some degree. Um, I, I just, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you're not reinvesting dividends, you're leaving significant money on the table. And all these accounts are like that. Be it uh, fixed index annuities, there's some life insurance thing with the life insurance index life insurance i forgot what the there's a terminology for that uh and then these buffered products are principal protected that's how they get paid and the fees on this guy is 0.79 percent as well and i'm not even using fees i'm just you know 0.79 i don't know if there's commission you pay to your broker i don't know if there's a one percent fee I, I literally have no idea i'm just using their gross returns uh, again this is not this isn't gross returns this is just approximation so please 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 don't say, oh, that's what, no, no, uh, 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 uh. no product. I'm not using any example of any specifics. I'm just saying, if this were similar to that, this is what you're looking at. And the, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, we're, we're talking, I mean, in this case, what, $800,000 with zero down, with no, no downside ever. And I, again, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that with no downside ever. I, even, you know, the Swan defined risk had down years. Um, 
doesn't look pleasant doesn't look pleasant so uh, <laughs> the end result here my friends if you're trying to protect downside risk and you think you're gonna get upside man you got to do something I just I don't see how this product's gonna work that well I just don't I just if you're trying to protect downside risk and you think you're gonna get up capture upside of the market I think I just think you should look at other alternatives. Now, hey, that's my suggestion. Hope this helps. As always, you like what you see. Don't forget to subscribe down below. I'm going to start saying this. I got a donate button. If you find value on this for a couple bucks, you want to donate it to me, I'll be happy to take it off your hands for sure. Uh, there's no gift tax, by the way. So if you give, there's no gift tax due. Just FYI. But I did put that donate button down there as well. And if, uh, if you like what you see, subscribe. Comments, questions, concerns, the whole thing. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.